we need to take this column of text and split by capital letters. So we get a result like this. It is possible to do this with an Excel worksheet formula, but that's just crazy. So luckily for this Excel magic trick 1617, Power Query comes to the rescue. <laughs> Power Query is up in the Data Ribbon tab. Get and Transform is Power Query. Now, I've already converted this column of data into an Excel table with the keyboard Control T, and I gave it a good name. Now, to get this into the Power Query window, we select a single cell, go up to From Table. In the Power Query window, we'll come over and rename our query. Split by caps and Enter. We don't need this step, so in Applied Steps, I'm going to use the red X. Now we select the column, Home, Split, and we would like to split by, well, we can't use a delimiter like space because then it would just split all the words. We need to split from the transition from a space to a capital letter. So I go up to the drop down for Split Column, and I see lowercase to uppercase, but I don't see space to uppercase. We're going to try this one. I click. If I come up to the formula bar, it writes most of the code for us. We definitely want to use table.split column. That's the name of the previous step, which is a table. Text, that's the name of the column inside of source that we would like to split. And then the third argument of table.split column is a function called splitter.split text by character transition. It thinks we want all possible lowercase as the text before the split and all possible capital letters after the split. But what we want, if we backspace, is simply in double quotes a space. Now it says, please split between a space and any capital letter. Now that's the function that sits in the third argument of table.split columns. The fourth argument requires that in list syntax, we type out all of the names of the columns or like in our case, maybe we don't know how many columns to split by. I'm simply going to put some big number here. I'm going to start with 5. And that formula will work when I hit Enter. Now we have split by the transition from a space to any capital letter. Close and load, close and load 2. We're going to say existing. We're going to put it right in D3. Click OK. Now, if we would like to limit it to only the number of columns that actually have text, then we're going to have to get a little tricky. To open our query, I'm going to double click. On the left, I want to open queries. We want to duplicate. Right click, duplicate. Now I'm going to close this queries pane on the left. Come up to the formula bar. We're going to highlight. The splitter function, that's a function sitting in the third argument of table.split column. But we want just that function, Control C, Escape. Now we're going to leave this step here. Click on the previous step, Source. And what we want to do is add a helper column to count how many splits there are for each row. So with our source selected, I'm going to come up to Add Column, Add Custom Column. We definitely want to insert a step. Click Insert. And then right here, where our formula goes, I'm going to Control V. Now, this is literally a function. So if we click OK and look at what it delivers, it's just delivering a function. We actually haven't used the function on this text column to count. Now, when we add a column, it adds table.addColumn function. The each allows us to do something for each row in our column. After splitter.split function, Actually, I'm going to come to the end and backspace. So we've gotten rid of table.add column close parentheses. The question is, how do we get this function to see that column, especially since there's open and close parentheses? Well, the way this function works is the first open and close parentheses house the text items that define what comes before and after the split. For this function, we have to add a second pair of open and close parentheses. The problem is the screen tip is for the before and after, not the second set 
where we, in square brackets, our field access operator, type the name of the column, this column right here, that we want this function to act on. So if you think about Excel worksheet functions, there aren't any open, close, and then a second set of open, close parentheses. But here in M code Power Query functions, this is an example of one of them. Now I'm going to close parentheses on table.addColumn. And when I hit Enter, I get my list. We have split by capital letters. For each one of the rows, we can count how many splits there are. Now rather than delivering the list to the actual cell, we want to come up to our formula bar. And after each, I want to type a space. And we want to count using our list.count function. I'm going to backspace, backspace. Come to the end, close parentheses, and now list.count will count how many items the splitter function is delivering. Our list of 3, 2, 4. Now we need the max value. Now notice add column is selected over here. When I come up to the formula bar and click F of X, I definitely want to insert. It gives me the full table, but I simply want to extract the custom column. And since this is a table, we use our field access operator, custom. And now when I hit Enter, I get a list of numbers. I want the max, so I use list.max. Close parentheses. And when I hit Enter, I get a single number. And that's the number I'm going to use in the last argument of table.splitColumns. Now I'm going to come here, F2. And we'll name it something like max splits and enter. Now, remember, I've been inserting steps. So this step, when I select it, has been updating. All that means is that the first argument has been updating. But I want this formula to look back to source. So I double click and type source. Now when I hit Enter, oh, it's still giving me that fifth one. I come to the last argument and type the name of that step which is delivering the number 4. Max, Tab, Enter. And now it's dynamic. I'm always going to get the correct number of columns. Now we have our two queries. This is the one we're working on, F2. We'll call this one Split by Caps Dynamic. And now when we close and load, close and load 2, we have to decide where the second query is going. Table, existing, a couple of rows down, click OK. And now if I change this to capital here, data, refresh all, or we can use the keyboard, Control Alt F5. This one just got lucky, but this one updated only because there was a fifth column. All right, so that was a little fun with M code in Power Query. And as always, thanks to Bill Scissors for this cool solution. And if you want to learn more about M code, check out this comprehensive introduction to M code.